throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies to the divine wisdom and knowledge, and we go as guided. And we begin this week's show, New Month Energies. It's a new month. It's the month of May. So it brings in the number five. So we've got some powerful, beautiful energies being set up for uh, the month of May continuing on. And really, again, they're going to arc out for the next couple of months right on the heels of all of the um, eclipse energies and so forth. Welcome, Alicia. And as you as you know, we incorporate your comments and questions live. So put a shout out in the comments, say hello. And then also um, as we go along, as we listen to the unseen. So let's just take a look at the main energies. We're going to set it up before I go to the, the actual main theme. Welcome, Olivia. So really auspicious, auspicious energy. So we look at, it's a five month, and that in the uh, I Ching is nourished while waiting, patience. Welcome, Ava. And, and it's a beautiful energy of knowing that we have everything we need within, as above, so below, and that we have, you know, really the patience and the grace, the faith to keep taking each step that's necessary to effectuate the outcome, the experience that we that we want to have. And that is really, as you'll see in our, our main theme, is our destiny. Then we have the one, which is the creative force. It's the it's to initiate. So it is the month of May. Mars just entered Aries. There's, uh, there's a force, there's an energy, there's a newness in the, in the air. And so we have that I associate with the one, the creative force. Eight year, all year long, we're uniting. We're bringing all the internal parts, the inside and the out together, and the macro, the micro to the macro. The 5-1-2024 becomes a 14. Great possessing, shine. And it is, it is for us to have this great abundance and you're going to see abundance and to shine it's not about keeping our light under a bushel basket it is about shining our light welcome lorna and then last but not least the one in the four becomes a five so we're doubling down on the fives so we're doubling down on the nourished while waiting but we're also 55 in the in the hexagrams in the yijing is great abundance so this great possessing shine great abundance so you can you see where the energies they're very auspicious, um, and then with our oh, they're having me go to the astrological influences first. Then up, and this came way back at the beginning of the year. So our theme for the astrological influences go go go. <laughs> so we've got this nourished while waiting patience, which means to take the necessary steps to you know it means to not over rush it doesn't it, it not to be rash but to go 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 it's don't delay don't procrastinate don't sit around and do nothing it's about taking the necessary steps to achieve our goals and what's interesting is the two things in the astrological influences that are important not that venus entering taurus and mars entering aries isn't uh, because they are the beauty into Taurus and it's earthy and it's grounded. Mars into Aries, it's a home sign. It's very, you know, again, initiate. It's that creative force. Mercury went direct. So last, on the 25th, uh, I believe it was last Thursday. So April 25th, Mercury stationed direct. So we're in the post-shadow phase. So things are going to start speeding up. So how we communicate, how we think, it's going to clear up, speed up, and these types of things. At, on coming up tomorrow on May 2nd, Pluto stations retrograde at two degrees Aquarius. This will be the final time that Aquarius stations retrograde and will move back, back up into Capricorn. 
it's going to do its final house cleaning, its final dismantling, its final shaking the tree, the roots, in Capricorn, where it's been for almost 20 years, before it officially moves into Aquarius and it goes direct again and will and then be in Aquarius for the next 19, 20 years. So it's really this final moment. It's very interesting that it's happening now and will actually cover in the United States, it will cover the election, this upcoming election in November. Um, it doesn't, uh, Pluto doesn't officially move into Aquarius, I believe until the, I want to say the 19th, yes, the 19th um, of November. But you'll see, and we're going to, we're going to play, we're going to play, we're going to play, Pluto's going to play with us. <laughs> so now we'll move into our main theme. So we have all of these, and keep in mind, we're going to focus on this Pluto retrograde on the heels of Mercury retrograde and going direct, the eclipse energies, this, the bookends of those. And what's amazing about our current week's theme, which I alluded to at the end of last week's show, and it's the main theme is beautiful theme. They said a direct calling, dot, 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 from God. So this is a direct calling from God. And then they said, what happens in the here and now? And what I love about the image is you see like all of this whimsical clouds in these various colors, the purples, magentas, the yellows, the oranges, kind of gray shadow. And then this piercing through of like, it's like piercing through the veil and beyond it, you see quote unquote earth, the blue skies and so forth. You see the sun way in the far distance. So this a direct calling from God, what happens in the here and now? And this is a play, it's a continuation and a play and, and a, a pinnacle based, it was part two of the, of the Eclipse Energy series, um, stepping through the doorway. What was I made for? So a direct calling from God, stepping through the doorway, what was I made for? What the unseen is talking about here is, there's a beautiful plaque that says, it's a statement, on a plaque that said, God doesn't, qual God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. So what the unseen is saying here is what happens in the here and now is this direct calling from God. It's like there's a wake-up call, there's a, an awareness and a, and a knowing. It's like the ringing of a bell. Ding! And internally, this awareness, this awakening, to what was I made for? What's my purpose? What am I really here, truly here to do? And then how that presents itself, presents itself in our lives. And so, and this is again, micro, individually, so everyone having this a direct calling, a wake-up call, and an awareness. I mean, it, they're saying to me in the moment, the unseen is saying, it will be as, as profound and as subtle, so it's going to, you know, oxymoron of the two, profound and subtle, but that's exactly the essence and the, the intrigue and the energy behind it. It will be this, like, for the very first time, I get it. I, I, I get a click, an internal knowing. And these, I mean, think about 8 billion clicks, <laughs> 8 billion souls plus on the planet, simultaneously clicking into an awareness of what I was made for. What was I made for? And this is associated with the Sabian symbol for the lot of fortune. So we're looking at, let me bring this up really quickly. We're looking at the astrological chart. This is the, the astrological horary chart for the when Pluto stations retrograde tomorrow. And so when we look kind of top left is the symbol. It's the circle with an X in it. That's the lot of fortune. And the symbol for it is the luminescence of dawn in the eastern sky, the exalting challenge of new opportunities at the threshold of a new cycle. While the rainbow marks the end of the crisis, early dawn indicates the real beginning of the new period of activity. In biblical symbolism, Noah plants his vineyard. He begins to teach the secret doctrine 
which he inherited from those Ben Elohim, sons of God. A direct calling from God. What happens in the here and now? This stepping through the doorway. So there's this, Noah was given information that no one else had. Society, if you will, mocked him. Why is he building this ark and doing all of this crazy stuff? But it was a direct calling. It was a direct knowing. And it came, and you'll see how this is going to play out. He begins to teach, quote, the secret doctrine, which he inherited from those Ben Elohim, sons of God, who had not been sucked down into whirl whirlpools of materiality. So in essence, ego, mind, personality, they remained pure. They, they were in their soul source connection. But at first, the state of deep inner exaltation remains within us. We are aglow with its promise. It's within. It's a click. It's, it's an awakening. The crisis and the blessings it has brought to us are relatively unusual events. Every day has its dawn, which we should meet with a pure heart and a clear mind. Alpha, Dawn, and Omega, the concluding peak experience, are opposites yet the same. It's the Ouroboros. It is the Alpha Omega. The beginning is the end. The end is the beginning. The key word here is illumination. And so we have this beautiful aspect of the click. The click is being, is illumination, being awakened to your direct calling, a direct calling from God, from higher source, however you'd like to um, identify with that. Allah, Buddha, God, the all that is, source, higher wisdom. The point is that there is a, a click, there is a, an illumination that occurs. Alicia is saying, how about shining a light on a wrong, referring to your comment on time to shine? Um, so it is our time to shine. I'm not clear. I'm not quite clear with, uh, Alicia's comment. So I'll come back to it. Ava is saying Pluto in my chart is on that degree. So again, you'll see how this for you, Ava, this will be, um, you're right in sync with the macro, the micro to the macro. Big energies, this lot of fortune. And this lot of fortune is for all of us. It's what's on offer from Pluto's retrograde for this final moment of reversing back into Capricorn and shaking the roots clean. I mean, Pluto, the lord of the underworld, the, the lord of the shadow, it's illuminating. The United States is having its Pluto return. The United States has not had one. It's every 246, 47 years. Well, so America is, is experiencing its Pluto return, its first one. And it shows us both the, the beauty and the blessings of what is, of what, of what is and what can be, but it also demonstrates where we've been, the goo, the unpleasant, the not pretty, that which has been hidden or which is, you know, carried out in the shadows. And notice on the world stage, whether it's businesses, governments, individuals, institutions, all of this shadow, goo, is coming to light. Coming, It's coming to bear. Why? Because we're having a Pluto is moving signs. It is shifting after 19, 20 years. And again, Pluto and Aquarius, not since the American and French and industrial revolutions. It's big change. So let me bring up, I'm going to go to, this is, I just came across her. Um, this is Astrology by Lauren, and she is speaking to um, the Pluto, Pluto's retrograde station. And I am going to share my screen with you all and bring this up. And here we go. So she is saying, and this is a beautiful quote. She starts this out with a beautiful quote by King Whitney Jr. And it says, Change has a considerable psychological impact on the human mind. To the fearful, it is, it is threatening because it means that things may get worse. 
To the hopeful, it is encouraging because things may get better. To the confident, it is inspiring because the change exists to make things better. Pluto's ingress, retrograde and then ingress into Aquarius, is about making things better and finishing up old business. It is about the renewal. Astrologer Lauren, she goes on to say, when Pluto stations, um, it digs in really deep. We become that much more aware of the use and abuse of power. So it's both the use of power and the abuse of power. We become much more aware of it when Pluto stations, which is what it's doing tomorrow, meaning at a standstill. Pluto can show us the power of transformation and healing through rebuilding, regenerating, and renewal. But it can also show us how things can go also horribly wrong or horribly awry, either by deliberately abusing power or by ignoring problems and trying to kick them under the rug. So here again, and this is so important, individuals, world leaders, and industry leaders, businesses, government leaders, it demonstrates the ability to rebuild, regenerate, and renew, but it can also demonstrate its shadow side, which is the deliberate abuse of power or the ignoring of problems and trying to sweep them under the rug. So to everyone listening, choose to face, choose to harness the shadow in service to the purity of the void and the purity of the light, to do right, to cleanse and heal, not to hide things and not to continue the abuse. She goes on to say, Pluto, much like all the other planets, really only has one true goal, which is to support our evolutionary growth. This begins by first revealing to us the dark, tangled tapestry of our lives, but only with the mission of healing them once and for all. See, this isn't a do-over. This isn't a, you know, straddle the fence and see what happens. This is a once and for all, like, let's shake the root of the trees. We're going to shake them so that we get it, we, we get off the decay and the we, re, we repair what's spoiled once and for all. Whether you think of that as becoming aware of the karmic threads that weave our destiny or even coming to realize our life's purpose, Pluto is always much deeper than at first realized. He is, after all, the Lord of the underworld. But when we are willing and courageous enough to do this deep dive, we can get in touch with nothing less than our true destiny and purpose. What was I made for? Stepping through the doorway, a direct calling from God. What happens in the here and now? The here and now, the present moment. If you are hating what you think you've found, so this is, oh, pardon me, I skipped something. Got to catch myself. Mercury. We're still in the shadow of Mercury. <sighs> Whether you think of that as becoming aware of the karmic threads that weave our destiny, or even coming to realize our life's purpose, Pluto is always much deeper than at first realized. But when we are willing and courageous enough to do this deep dive, we can get in touch with nothing less than our true destiny and purpose. And you will know that you have found it because it will feel right for you. So again, that click, that illumination, that knowing, you're going to know it's right because it feels right. There's an illumination to it. If you are hating what you think you found, you haven't dug deep enough. Pluto literally focus, uh, forces us to face our own darkness, to get to the utter truth of things, and then to forgive and accept who and what we are all in, without guile. So this is about like, if we haven't dug deep enough, if we're unwilling, we're not looking at the shadow, and look at the shadow as your friend. Fear is your friend. It's a force. The shadow is a force. Harness that energy, that force, for you, on your behalf. And when we do this work, know that there are other things that are also buried below the surface as well. Treasures of unequal beauty and resilience, honed by life's external pressures and the breath of time, gifts that are inexplicably beautiful and magical. 
These are the rewards that are available to us if we are willing to do this deep work. For Pluto is also the alchemist who can turn lead into gold, the phoenix reborn from the ashes of a life that once was, the magician who can transform experience into revelation. And so it is during the retrograde phase of Pluto that we are not only given a, great, a greater capacity to heal and transform our lives, but to meet our own magi who can lead us through this labyrinth to our own salvation. Lauren concludes with a quote, uh, a quote by Dean Jackson. When she transformed into a butterfly, the caterpillar spoke not of her beauty, but of her weirdness. They wanted her to change back into what she always had been, but now she had wings. See, this Pluto is transformative. This final retrograde into Capricorn on the heels of the eclipse energies, the Mercury retrograde energies, the Scorpio full moon energies. I mean, there was so much packed into April. The Mars and Saturn conjunction, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Boom, 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 boom. And here we are with the final, Mer uh, the final Pluto retrograde back into Capricorn to finish up. It'll be from now until so five, May 2nd to October 11th, it will be back in um, Aquarius on November 19th. So we are harnessing this energy. And what the unseen is saying to us is in this time, really, and here, here comes the sun. It's number five. Here comes the sun. So number five, the doubling down on the fives, the month of May, a five. It's time. It, it's it's the time. And it is about this direct calling, this direct awakening that you, and it's tied to the lot of fortune. It has the um, synergy, if you will, of Noah receiving a direct message and then soul source connection saying, I can see what the world looks like. I can see what society looks like, my village, my people, my friends, my family. And yet, like Noah, you have a choice to go as guided, to know that it is your calling and that you're being qualified. You already It's already within you. So whatever it may be individually, what we know is that as the individual, we it harnesses the collective because we make, we're strands, we're gold strands of the tapestry of the whole. So all of this is there. We have... A bunch of tarot this week um, as well, that I should say this month, and as, with these Pluto energies. We're going to start with the Six of Cups, because with the main theme, a direct calling from God, what happens in the here and now? The first thing they said, the Unseen said was, we're going to take a walk down memory lane, dot, 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 first, which immediately brought in visions of like an accelerated life path review. So with this calling and with this awakening and this ding, the bell, we're going to take a walk down memory lane first. And here's Pluto retrograding. We're going to go back and look. We're going to have a, a rapid and accelerated life review. Again, this can be individual and collective, micro, macro. And with the intention of the decay, the repair what's spoiled, the, it's a life review. And you often hear when people have a brush with danger or potential literal death or something, an axe, they, they are like, I had my life flash before me. That's what they're talking about here. We're going to take a walk down memory lane. So six of cups. Let's, I'm going to give you two different, there's a main theme and a specific theme. The main theme is the six of this suit generally represents a refreshing openness and innocence a willingness to learn, and an optimism that things will get better as we advance together in understanding. I'm just going to bring up this image of the Six of Cups. It's beautiful. It's an image of a, and remember from last week's main theme, we had a young man and woman, a boy and a girl. Here again, Six of Cups, we have that same image. And they're reversed in the sense that the, the girl is kneeling and the young boy is standing, presenting her something. The traditional title, the past, meaning the Six of Cups, its traditional title is the past, reminds us of our original nature when we were young and enthusiastic, when anything was possible and the future was an open book. We are to remember that this same freshness 
we are to remember that this same freshness, those new possibilities are always available to us even now. So it's to remember our innocence, the purity, the goodness, the newness, because, you know, we, we grow up and all of a sudden life, quote unquote, life gets in the way. Well, they're reminding us, and this speaks to the, the Six of Cups speaks to the past, things coming back from the past. Here's Pluto retrograde. So these things that we look to from the past. Specifically, the Six of Cups is about the past impacting the present. So this life review. You are being called to examine whether or not you're tethered to your past in some way. While it's true we sometimes need to look in the rear view mirror, and I finally found, I'm gonna bring this image up very quickly, because for, for weeks now in the show, we've, I've been saying that the Unseen showed me this vintage car, this convertible vintage car, and that we utilized the rear view mirror as a way to navigate forward and that it was associated with Mercury's recent retrograde, but we're on the open highway. And this is specifically, here's the Six of Cups tying back to this, and this beautiful vintage car image. And it's saying that it's, you know, are you tethered to the past in some way? While it's true we sometimes need to look in the rear view mirror as a way of informing current or future decisions, we can easily become stuck living in the past if we're not careful. Don't let nostalgia or distorted memories prevent you from making progress and appreciating what's happening in the here and now. Allow your past to be a source of improvement rather than a source of stagnation. See, it's, it's about allowing our experiences, so our past, our experiences, to refine us, not define us. To be a source of improvement, not a source of stagnation. It is about looking at the shadow, the goo, the past, a, a life review, rapid, accelerated life review, because this is not some slow, this is not a slow roll. The unseen is very clear about this is rapid, boom, 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 boom. It's going to be rapid, which plays to one of our other tarot cards, which is the Eight of Wands, which we had a few shows back. It's making an appearance again. However, we're looking at the fact that the Six of Cups, I'm just going to bring it up one more time, this beautiful image of the Six of Cups, innocence, the past, um, being presented with um, the innocence, the goodness, the renewal, and innocence, the key word innocence, to go about everything that you're going to be experiencing in this accelerated fashion, the life review, the, the Pluto retrograde, the eclipse energies, all of this forward advanced movement is to do so from a state of innocence, purity. As we look at the world stage and the old crumbles and the new rises, look at it with innocence through the eyes of purity and innocence of anything's possible, renewal. So we now are going to go to, because right on the heels of this life review, so we're going to go down, we're going to take a walk down memory lane first. That's what the unseen is saying to us. This accelerated life path review, repair, decay, repair what's spoiled. And right behind it, they said, visitation. This is number two, visitation, ancestors, higher calling, elders. And then they said the word preparation. So this visitation by ancestors, elders, a higher calling. And bear in mind the show's theme, the, the energies is a direct calling from God. What happens in the here and now? So we're talking about a life review. We're talking about a visitation. So literally dreams, uh, meditations, literal apparitions, however it may come to you, it's about visitation by ancestors, Higher calling, so higher source, elders, loved ones, however it may present for you. Why? Because of preparation. You're being prepared for what it is you're calling, what you're doing, how you will go about manifesting this. And, and remember, it's, it's Aquarian. It's the Aquarian age. It's for we the people, 
meaning what you will do, what all of us will do. It's an inverse of what we have been in the Piscean era. The Piscean era, era it was ego, mind, personality. It's about me. And by default, what I do, others may receive or experience. Aquarian age is the inverse of that. What I do is for all, and by default, I, as the custodian, derive joy and benefit and, and in this, prestige, honor. You'll see how that's playing out. However, it's the inverse of it. It is no longer about ego, mind, personality. It is about the ego, mind, personality in service to the soul, the soul leading, and thus the Aquarian age, which is what I do, what my, my calling is, my direct calling is, will serve humanity, we the people, and by default, I receive the beauty, the blessings, the gifts of those experiences. It has always been this way, but we inverted it. Piscean, patriarchal, ego, mind, personality era inverted that and, um, and, and really forgot about. It became all about me, ego, mind, personality, the I, me, 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 I, I, I. And the we got lost. Well, now it's an inverse. It's a change. Beauty of the Six of Cups. And again, the visitation. So where we're going or I'm sorry, we're going to take a walk down memory lane and the visitation for the preparation all ties to the lot of fortune, the Sabian symbol to the lot of fortune. There's a lot here and I apologize. I'm a little bit, um, they would say verklempt, <laughs> meaning the energies and there's so much here and the Mercury retrograde shadow. I'll move along. Move along, dear James, get it going. So next up is this beautiful, um, we have this leap of faith because that's what this is going to require. It is about faith. And all of this says, while I see what's happening on the world stage around me, the tree, the, the root of humanity's foundation is being shook into its core. Well, then also then says, while simultaneously while that's occurring, let me look to the future. I'm going to visit the past, but I'm not staying there. I'm going to harness the past for my future benefit, my present future, what happens in the here and now. There's a leap of faith in front of you. This is likely coming from a deep gut instinct. You may not have logic behind you, so we may not comprehend. One could say about Noah with the ark and this direct calling. It, it defied logic. There's no logic to it because at, at Noah's time, like we are, we're living where we live. We're doing what we're doing. And all of a sudden you get a wake-up call. You get a, an awareness, an illumination, a calling. And it's a knowing. It's, it's, a know, it's a gut instinct. It's a knowing. I know I'm to do this. I know this is my path. And, and it could be I'm to change locations. I'm to change jobs. I'm to change relationships. I'm to embark on this path and, and shudder this one. You'll know. And it may or most likely will defy logic. You may not have logic behind you, but your intuition is saying yes. Yes, 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 or go, go, go. It's okay to feel a little hesitant or a lot hesitant <laughs> because it can be challenging to go this way. Imagine being Noah and having to do, defy, you know, logic. Endure the ridicule, the worry, because really the, the ridicule and everything, the mocking, ridicule, whatever it may be, it's other people's insecurities or fears that they are projecting. You have a direct knowing, a direct calling. So while you may have hesitation or trepidation or, you know, nervous energy fear, you'll also have a very deep, strong, rooted knowing. And so it's like, it's okay because it can be challenging to go this way. You might want to give up in the early stages, but once you get through the first few steps, the hard part should be behind you. Push through the discomfort to get to the rewards. All of these with the, the tarot and everything is from tarot.com. I'm sourcing this from tarot.com. 
So we have this beautiful leap of faith because we are leaving the past behind. The, they have been, they, the unseen, has been guiding us since November 17th of 2021 when we embarked on this journey that the old is over, the new is before us, what came before us, what, what we experienced before and what's literally we're to receive, and that it's a return of the divine feminine and the Aquarian age and this unity, we the people, and how we unify inside and out. So we look then to number three from the unseen. And they said the three of wands. And the three of wands, I'm going to bring up the image here. And the three of wands in the tarot, this suit has to do with, so the wands in the tarot represent initiative, ambition, drive, and desire. Mars in Aries. This whole creative force, initiative, ambition, drive, and desire. It is, the, it is the suit of enterprise and risk-taking. And enterprise and risk-taking as in informed, listening, intuitive, going as guided. A three in this suit symbolizes an inner balance that allows you to feel more optimistic about new endeavors you are committed to or want to commit to. In the illustrated tarot, the human character is standing on his balcony, watching ships leave the harbor, loaded with goods, for far off ports, dreaming of the fortune he or she they will rep will reap when all goes well. Summon the optimism within you. And with this three of wands, it can be that you have already been in the process of what you're doing. You've put it all in, you're you're doing everything. And these ships, because they said the three of wands, your ships have come in, have arrived. So there will be those that have already been on the path. And they have already done and embarked on what we're talking about, what the Unseen is talking about here. And those ships are coming in. And there will be another wave, and another wave after that, of those that are just embarking on it, are just getting their calling and their wake up. And they are in, in the initiatory place of, of starting that. The point will be that Three of Wands, your ships have come in, arrived. They come in, they arrive. It's not for nothing. Noah building the ark saved humanity, saved humankind and, and the animal kind and, you know, the, our experience is Earth, with Mother Earth. So there's that same message is being provided to all of us that your ships come in, they arrive. And they said, go, exclamation point, see, exclamation point, rejoice, exclamation point, the fruits of your labor or labors. So there's a beautiful, very strong, powerful message here of, and it's in waves, phases, waves. Those who have already gotten their illumination or their wake-up call and to go do, and it's going to defy logic, and you're already into it, and you've put it all in, while well, the ships are coming in. Go rejoice. Go see the fruits of your labors. There'll be those that are just initiating now. There'll be another wave after that that are initiating after that. All of these initiations, these illuminations, these waves, these callings, a direct calling from God, are for the collective, we the people, Aquarian age, the inverse of self. The ego mind personality at, as the custodian will experience what your soul, higher power, source, God, has destined. It's already part of you. It's already there. It's already yours. You just have to step through the, the fear of it, if you will. So summon the op optimism within you. This energy must be patient and trusting because he or she, they will have to wait some time to find out how the ships have fared. But we already know the ships fare well. Because as with Noah, the unseen is saying to us, it's number three, your ships have come in, they've arrived. Go, see, rejoice the fruits of your labors. While you're waiting, a lot of resources are tied up until they return with the bounty. Only those truly confident in their ideas and abilities want to undertake such a risk. And there's the point here, see, it's not about whether you believe 
in you, ego, mind, personality. It's when you believe in the knowing, the illumination, the higher calling, the destiny, you know it. It allows you to face the odds, the obstacles, to undertake the risks because you know it's the right thing to do. You just know it. This card represents, the Three of Wands, represents the energy a person needs to take on great adventures and accomplish no, noble, re, uh, remunerative deeds. Noble, noblesse oblige, noble, we the people. It's not about the individual, it's about us. It's not about I, it's about we. Because in essence, we're fulfilling our soul's destiny, our soul's work. And when it's no longer about us, note that you will, you will feel a shift. Because it's, it's like you show up and you say, okay, Unseen, I understand this is my calling. This is what I'm to do. Now show me, tell me what the steps are. And because it's no longer, quote unquote, about you, it's not that you won't have nervousness and so forth, but you will do so in a way because you're now the custodian of something. The focus isn't on you. The focus is on the works. You're the custodian of the works. You receive and derive by, by association, by, by channel, the experience. But the, the floodlight, the spotlight, is no longer on you, the individual ego, my personality. Yes, you're the one showing up and doing the works, but the focus is the works, not you. A detail that sometimes appears in the more esoteric tarot is a winged wand with two snakes twining around it called the caduceus, which is Mercury's wand. Mercury's going, gone direct. And Mercury, how we think, communicate, all of this. It's our inner personal planet. This is an ancient symbol of the healer or shaman, one who can travel between the worlds to rescue souls from death or possession. Pluto, lord of the underworld, death, possession. Perhaps the feeling of empowerment this card represents points to the internal mechanisms of self-healing. Perhaps it refers to the courage it takes to be an entrepreneur or an inventor, which is in itself a magical process. Nikola Tesla would listen, he would go into what he called the fourth dimension. He would see the instrument or the, the item that was to be created. He would see the entire thing and fine tune everything in his mind's eye, the fourth dimension. When he actually then brought it into physicality, there was one. It was one and done. There were no multiple tries and attempts in physicality. It was all done in the fourth dimension and then brought into physicality, one and done, and it worked. Um, so that's a magical process, bringing not only opportunity for sex, sex, oh, success, not sex, success, but also an awakening to higher potentials. Boy, they about it. They, the unseen's got to have a good time today. <laughs> so the three of wands, your ships have come in. They've arrived. Go, see, rejoice the fruits of your labor. There's a beauty in the sense that we are all being called. And, and I, I just, there, the unseen is saying to me, and it matter not your age. It doesn't matter how old you are. You're 90, you're 100, you're 20. It doesn't matter because we're right on time. You're right on time. And whatever it is, whatever this direct calling is, it's for the here and now. It's what happens in the here and now. And so we have this opportunity for these blessings. Number four from the unseen, kindness magnified. You reach hyphen claim the top of your game. So these are the rewards that we're talking about. There's, look at the reward that humanity, that Noah and his offspring and family and everything, the reward was the entire renewal of Mother Earth and humanity and humankind and nature kingdom and animal kingdom, the whole of the whole. And then to be, in essence, the steward, the custodian of humanity in that renewal or the human experience. 
a massive reward. So here, number four, kindness magnified. You reach hyphen claim the top of your game. Saluting, being saluted, a job well done. And it has to do with mastery. And this has to do with the Sabian symbol associated with the moon for the Pluto retrograde that's stationing tomorrow on the 2nd. The Sabian symbol for the moon, deeply rooted in the past of a very ancient culture, a spiritual brotherhood in which many individual minds are merged into the glowing light of a unanimous consciousness is revealed to one, has e to one who has emerged successfully from their metamorphosis. So we have this deeply rooted in the past, an ancient, and we've got here ancestors, higher calling, elders, with the visitation, a spiritual brotherhood, higher, higher powers, in which many individual minds are merged into a glowing light, illumination, of a unanimous consciousness, and it's revealed to those who have emerged successfully from their metamorphosis. They're answering the call. They're defying logic. They're going as guided. They are doing what they know to do. And their ships are coming in. It's being revealed and they're receiving their rewards. And or if you're embarking on this or yet to embark on it, it's telling you what will happen when you do. The ability for the person with an open mind and a deep feeling for self-transcendence to come in contact with higher forms of existence. The originally recorded Sabian symbol stated, the field of Ardath in bloom which referred to a scene in an occult wisdom novel by Marie Corelli, centering upon ancient Babylon. The reference may well have been, a bl it may well have been blind inasmuch as Mark Jones, who wrote, um, initially recorded the Sabian symbols from Elsie Wheeler, has stressed his inner contact with a brotherhood with Babylonian or Sabian roots. A spiritual brotherhood constitutes a state of multi-unity a multiplicity of individuals, if one thinks of the paths they trod to reach their final metamorphosis, but a unity of consciousness and soul, S-O-U-L, thus unanimity, anima, meaning soul. So this collective soul, this collective uniting, harmonizing. In this spiritual whole, each unit is a recognizable form or entity when one looks at it with the eyes of personality. But when seen through a unified spiritual vision or from a distance, the whole appears to be one single area of radiant light. This one single source, source of light. Similarly, when studied by the modern physicist, light can be apprehended either by a stream of identifiable particles, photons, so they can see them as individual pieces, eight billion souls, you can see them as individuals or as one continuous wave, one massive tapestry, one massive radiant glowing light. Whether it is seen as one or the other depends on the point of view. This is the last and culminating symbol of scene 22 of the cyclic ritual. This is indeed a fitting symbol. As the number 22 symbolizes, it's the most powerful master number. So the number 22 symbolizes all forms of mastery. At any level, it is a symbol of spiritual group fulfillment, of conscious totality of being, we the people, an awakening, an illumination that allows our soul to lead, that allows us to serve with the ego mind personality in service to the soul. A conscious totality of being, unified, uniting. And here they're saying, kindness magnified. You reach hyphen claim the top of your game, saluting and being saluted, a job well done, mastery. And with it being the symbol of the moon, it says to us, the moon both reflects the light of the sun, of source, and it also reveals it. It reveals what's hidden. And so again, these things that this is not outside of us. This is not airy, fairy, made up, wish it were true. It's, it is the ideal becomes the new reality. So in the new reality, 
this, we had the butterfly and the metamorphosis and that third wing. So the God strand in our DNA, what's within us is awakened, illuminated. Just because it's been quote unquote dormant doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And as we're rapidly advancing, it doesn't mean that we stay in the past. We harness the past for the present future, for what happens in the here and now. It is the beauty of the vintage car, as I'm bringing it up again, this beautiful vintage car. It's a, it's a convertible. It's the sun and the wind and all of the beauty you know, on you as you're driving. Remember they said it's an open lane, an open way. There's no traffic jams. There's wide open movement, advance. And we use this rear view mirror, this vintage car representing the past, the rear view mirror, what's behind us, to safely navigate, to be empowered, so that we know where we've been, so that we know where we're going. We know who we are. And that, Alicia's saying, definitely trying to clean up old business. Exactly, because the point and the beauty is, step by step, piece by piece, keep aligning, keep purging and purifying, keep harnessing the shadow, keep looking to it, not to be, a, not to be immobilized by fear, but to be propelled forward, not to stay in the past or be stuck in stagnation in the past, but to liberate yourself into the present future. It is about unburdening, repairing what's spoiled. That's where we're going. Number five, they said, literally, here comes the sun. And this has to do with the eight of wands. And we've had this image before. And they were saying, so here comes the sun, eight of wands, swift action and information. And so the eight of wands, again, from tarot.com, the wands, again, represent initiative, ambition, ambition, drive, desire, enterprise, risk-taking. And they said the aid of this suit often shows a flight of spears or stabs moving through the air in formation as if a hidden group of archers had let them fly all at once. The moon revealing what's hidden. So it's as if a hidden group of archers had let them fly all at once. This can refer to swiftly unfolding events whether of unintentional or intentional design. So whether you're aware of them or unaware of them. Source, the ancestors, the higher calling, the elders, the visitation, the preparation, <laughs> the, re the reveal, the, the accelerated life path review, all of these things. So whether or not you're consciously aware and participating or unconscious of it, it is intentional, it is intentional design. It is higher hand. There are also versions that emphasize the agricultural cycle, parallel, paralleling the yearly crop cycle with the swift growth of children into adults with children of their own, this acceleration. So we have an acceleration moving forward. We have an acceleration looking back. This advance, we are moving forward, and it is swift action and information. In each case, the emphasis is on the necessity of change and the challenge of keeping up with it. See, this is not, we have said this so often, this is not about going back to 1950 or 1864 or, you know, the beginning of the Piscean patriarchal era or maintaining it, staying stuck, stagnant in it. In each case, the emphasis is on the necessity of change and the challenge of keeping up with it. Advance, moving forward. With the turning of the seasons, we are constantly being forced to deal with change, and there is no remedy but to live with that in mind. So, get busy. There is no time to waste. It is the go, go, go <laughs> aspect. We're dealing with hexagram... Uh, I'm pulling in hexagram 55 because we're doubling down on the fives as we as we talked about at the top of the hour. And so what's beautiful about this is hexagram 55 is abundance. Its action is fulfill. So there's fulfillment here. 
it is for us to radiate, to shine, to be fulfilled. Our quote is, when you make your heart like a lake, life will continuously fulfill you. And this is a beautiful image of this cascading waterfall, all in blue, into a lake, a lagoon down below. So when you make your heart like a lake, life will continuously fulfill you. They talk about, in hexagram 55, it says, that which attains the place in which it belongs is sure to become great. Therefore follows the idea of abundance. In the land of Tay, you can operate from scarcity or abundance. Scarcity is a kingdom where all of the people are hungry because they do not know how to grow sustenance. They take what they feel is missing and conquer others out of a sense of inadequacy. Operating from the root of scarcity ensures that you will discover opportunities to validate its existence. This is, speaks specifically to the shadow element, to what Pluto is demonstrating of what's not good, the shadow aspect of the past 2,000 plus years, the Piscean patriarchal era. We operate, we live in a, a realm or an existence of scarcity. We, we believe that it's, it's scarce, so we've got to hoard everything. It's about me, I, 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 I. It's about the ego mind personality. This is coming from Carrie uh, Hone at CafeOSoul.com. Abundance, on the other hand, is a kingdom with a horn of plenty, where the people cultivate and share in the knowledge of an inexhaustible source. Described as the land of Tay, or virtue, the land of virtue, Quote, they know how to make things, but do not hoard. They give, but seek no return. Tay is your instinctual endowment where inner promptings help you actualize your destiny. It's knowing that we have everything. It's knowing that it's a, it's a horn of plenty. It is a smorgasbord of anything. It is, life is a banquet. It's all there. And thereby, we openly share. We openly give and receive. They've spoken to us, the unseen has said about the divine feminine energy and the force. It's not genie in the bottle. It's not meant to be contained or, or harnessed and held onto or manipulated or controlled. She is far more powerful than that. This force is far more powerful than that. And she will not allow that to be our destiny or her destiny because that's not her energy. That's not her purpose. That's not her divine calling and origin. Fang is the zenith of abundance, where something is so full that it overflows. In the image of your overflowing inner reserves, you are not made empty while you give. This is the way of a kingdom of abundance. So it means when we give freely and openly, it's constantly, we're in reciprocity, it's constantly coming back to us magnified. Kindness is magnified. You reach and claim you, the top of your game. It's about being rewarded, the rewards. The master said, when the sun stands at midday, it begins to set. Be not sad. The fullness and emptiness of life wax and wane in the course of time. When you make your heart like a lake, life will always fulfill you. The wise stand firm and do not change direction. A gusty wind and downpour cannot last all day. The changing climate always brings sustenance to the garden within. The longest day of the year means that tomorrow ushers in decline. Yet, when the days are darker, we spend more time with family, celebrating the ways in which we are thankful. So again, we ebb and flow. When the sun is shining and we're harvesting and we're the creative force and everything, it's an outward expression. It's active. And yet, when the days are darker, in a, in a, the southern hemisphere is going into fall and winter. We become more introverted, if you will. We spend more time internally or with family, celebrating in ways that are more maternal. So there's this beautiful balance, yin-yang. Although the sun appears to set and the moon appears to wane, they always remain full. It's always the fullness of the sun and the fullness of the moon. Life always moves to, uh, to fill you, but if you are unfulfilled, 
you have allowed yourself to be filled with something else. What you protect within gives rise to what you encounter externally. Too much holding on to anything will leave you perplexed. Leave your kingdom and its ways. Take nature as your guide and travel to the land of Te. You stand at the threshold of actualizing abundance, stepping through the doorway or crossing the, crossing the threshold. This hexagram, 55 Abundance, can show the expansion of consciousness because the simple joy that comes from trusting in unfolding events is something that can never be taken from us. To understand that everything is a reflection of growth and perfectly what we need to discover in each moment is the basis of an enlightenment. So here we have, again, it's the understanding that everything is a reflection of our growth and perfectly what we need to discover in each moment the basis of an, our enlightenment. We have it all. And we will conclude with the quote, this last quote, life's only constant is change, which is so very, very true. And we are at a pinnacle moment with this Pluto return of the energies that we choose, the experience we choose, the change that we choose. Life's only constant is change. And you see this beautiful image of like a pinwheel of, of just vibrant, radiant, you know, rainbow-esque colors. And the unseen said with the Pluto retrograde, they said, round and round and round it goes. Where it stops, no one knows. And they had given that to us prior in a, in a show prior. And then it was immediately the carnival huckster. And the huckster is, amoral, lacking a moral sense, unconcerned with rightness. And so, again, we can see how the carnival huckster, the shadow, the goo, the underbelly, that the lord of the underworld, Pluto, is raising into the light to be seen, is demonstrating, they're highlighting this for us, and they're saying, if they're giving me two things, it's which we've had before, that Glinda in, in The Wizard of Oz, come out, come out wherever you are. So should you be leaning into your goodness? Come out, come out wherever you are. Align. Your three of wands, your ships are coming in, or you will be embarking on this, and they will come in. And if you are the carnival huckster, and we're seeing a lot on the world stage, where the carnival huckster, the the amoral, the lacking of moral, of a moral sense, or the unconsciousness of rightness, <clears throat> those chickens are coming home to roost, and they are playing out in a very painful, loud, um, <clears throat> pardon me, way, solely with the intent. Of repairing what's spoiled. <clears throat> Pardon me, y'all. Of going as guided, of moving into the new. So, like last month, it's very apparent to me, I'm going to close with this, it's very apparent to me that these energies for the month of May, because there's a lot we haven't gotten to, it's going to come into parts. Um, however, the foundation for these energies, for this next iteration, and again, they're, they're riding with each other. And this is unlike in the years prior with Weekly Wisdom and Insights. They're, the Unseen is showing me April in the left hand, May in the right hand. They go together, yin yang. Uh, they're, they're complementary energies. They're powerful energies. And they are the tone, is what they're saying. They're not setting the tone. They are the tone for the new for the advance, for the shedding of the old, and for our guidance in how we choose to align with that, to release the past, harness the past, utilize it, don't get stuck or stagnant in it, so that when you navigate, when you are awakened, illumined, the bell rings, the, the third wing appears, you are already 
moving in alignment and harmony with your calling, your destiny, your future. Because it is moving forward and it is going that direction. That direction meaning Aquarian, matriarchal, divine feminine, this we the people, unity, togetherness. It is not the past. It is not going backwards. So with that, I will leave you all until next week. Thank you for bearing with me on my coughing and <laughs> hiccups and everything um, with my own mercury, uh, mercury retrograde in humanness. So thank you all. I love you all. I'm so excited for your, your presence on this journey and where it's all leading and taking us. So until next week, be well, and we will see you then. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.